<laughs> these off these off camera comments. Are <laughs> so funny. They're off camera, um, but they're by on the way, camera. they're not off camera. Yeah, they're, yeah. Okay. they're off camera, but they're not on so camera. So we got the window. Y'all aren't so seeing them. But welcome you know. back to the cheat code, everybody. Yeah, so how you guys doing? To be here. One time for your shirt. Another episode. Can we read the shirt out? The, the difference shirt? between opioids and crack is my eyes are up here. Racism. Well, I'm sorry. Well, had to get we're a, reading uh, the shirt though. Yeah, I had to get the uh, the, the, it was the, the cleavage cam. <laughs> I, lo I love the glasses, by the way. Are Thanks. we gonna do? Are we gonna have the glasses cam to go with the shoe cam? Yeah, we gotta have glasses cam. Can we do her, an episode her, her, wearing glasses? You gotta make mine clear though. Like I can't. Yeah. Because when I wore yours the other day, if I'm gonna wear glasses it. around Wendy, I can only wear gazelles. So, can somebody mm -hmm. find me a gazelle plug? Yeah. So we can get some gazelles. I'm not gonna do anything but gazelles around Wendy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe some Fosachis. <laughs> Only just in the memory of Biggie. You know what I mean? But definitely right. some gazelles. Yeah. I love the shirt though. I mean, but Thank it's you. definitely yeah. the truth. The difference between opioids and crack is racism. It is racism. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have so, you ever been through Baltimore? Yes. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. Have you ever been through Baltimore? Holy shit. It's crazy shit. up there. Yeah. I was just in um was just in uh, uh going through the south and like every gas station now offers Kratom. And for those of you lames who don't know. Kratom is the store alternative to heroin. So when these guys can't get heroin, they, they get, get the Kratom and it'll balance them out so they won't go through withdrawals wow. and won't go freaky. So it's like, it looks like an earth, like a green powder, smells like shit. And from what I understand, it tastes horrible, but it's the only thing that'll keep them from getting sick. They're so still going like to want methadone? the dope, kind of like methadone, but it's like a, a whey powder. You know that, that weight gainer stuff that you would get yeah, from yeah, GNC? Yeah. It's a powder that they mix with water and they have to drink it in order to keep them getting sick. So shout wow. out to all the Kratom dealers in America running it up right now thanks to the opioid epidemic. Interesting. Yeah. So do you think hip hop played a role in that? Like yeah. with perks yes. and syrup? Yes. I do too. Because you have drug rap. You have you have gangster rap. You have R and B. You have hip hop thought provoking rap. Then you got drug rap. You got trap rap of course, but you got a lot of rappers that talk about drugs. About selling it. Like not yes. getting high off. Not your getting own high. Then you got yeah. you know your zombie rap. Where rappers is talking about doing mm. doing the drugs and being on drugs. I don't know. I I've, I've used a whole bunch of drugs in my lifetime. Shit, I was drank. That's my stomach is fucked up now from drinking lean. Really? Yeah. Wow. My stomach is bad fucked up drinking lean. I had a friend of mine had a mm. fifty five gallon drum of that shit. Damn. So we went crazy for like a summer, like real real bad, and it fucked my stomach up to this day. So you have like stomach? Like I have stomach cramps and pains, and you would never believe my stomach to this day is fucked up from lean. Wow. Yeah. Damn. I was good until I started drinking that shit. Then when I was drinking that shit, I went overboard. I have an addictive personality. So, so like, if I in. like something, I'm going to go all in. Like, if I like food, I'm going to go back every I day see, until I don't I like it anymore. I see that about you. I see that about you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I've uh, I've indulged in, in in more than I would care to admit. But I have no shame in it. You know what I mean? It's made me the person I am today. I'm not a junkie today. or a fiend right. or anything. But your boy has gotten high yeah. in, in America's streets. And I'll tell you what. I was never influenced by a rapper. I was never influenced by a television show. I got high because I wanted to get high. Okay. So, you know what I mean? To say that, you know, we, we want to blame a culture or a genre or a facet or a, a, a sound for an epidemic that goes on, I think is kind of putting it in a box. I don't want to say maybe rap might have shined the light on it happening more than what not. I would say influence, though. It made though, it cool. But yeah, it, made it, made it, it definitely cool. cool. Pop perks but I think, I think the people that were drinking the lean... We're doing so because of the cool people around them, not because Pimp C said it. Got it. I think it was a culture in Texas to drink lean. I think it was Pimp definitely C a just culture. happened definitely. to be one of the guys and that was drinking lean music. and got on. Same thing with you know Lil Wayne and some of these other guys. At some point, it goes from from being a drug to being something that they need. Mm. And too much of anything you need, Michael Jackson, God bless the dead. You know what I mean? Too much of anything you need can ultimately kill you. Uh, but brain Pimp freeze C moment. I didn't know why Keisha until the end. Like I didn't know why Keisha was about lean. <laughs> Cut no it idea. out, dog. No, I mean, I didn't pay attention to the lyrics until later on after hearing it so many times. I'm over here like, he keeps talking about this girl got purple hair, dark skin. I'm over here like, wait, oh, he's not talking about his girl. He's talking about a cup. Cry. Oh. That's funny. My bad. That's an I awesome moment. You, yeah, you didn't, didn't for real? It for took real? me a minute. Now yep. keep in wow. mind, I'm talking about. Because my... I don't listen, to, I listen to the beat right. more than I beat, listen to his, the lyrics. The sound of his voice. I said, oh, yeah, this is a hit. The okay. analogy. Move on to the next thing. Yeah. I moved, I moved exactly. on. So it then good. when yeah. I come back and I'm driving and I said, I'm listening to the lyrics as I'm driving, stuck in traffic in Atlanta. And, and then I said, hit you. oh, <laughs> he's talking about lean. So as a radio person, yeah. how does that make you feel? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm transparent. I, I related to my audience. So I just said, shit, I thought, I didn't know what he was talking about. Did, hey, did did your bosses at the station know what he was talking about? And they if so, I thought not before if everybody. they would have known, would they have 
been inclined to program the uh, record. Bro, we, we play worse course. shit. Yeah, yeah we play worse shit would. at station. So you don't play it because it's programming anybody. You play it because it's popular. It's not censorship. Yeah. It's right. not, but I'm just saying, yeah. you're yeah, not going to play it because music. it's programming somebody. You're playing it because Correct. it's popular. Correct. So much, a popular much to sound. what people in the world believe, they think that you have to be negative in order to sell. There's a lot of people that believe right. that. Like there's a conspiracy to destroy the world through negativity. Right. Which I get. We no, have R&B versions though. SZA got a song called I Hate You. I mean, it's an R&B version of motherfucker, I hate you. I can't fucking stand you. Fuck you. And she's just singing. So we were listening to Jahim you. on the way in, me and, me, and, me and the wife. And Jahim, the beginning of his first album, he's getting out of prison. And then the second song, he's talking about, you know, you better chill out and talking to my old lady, I'm going to kick your ass, but he's singing it. So, you know, I, I get it. It's just different. Different strokes for different folks, I guess, right. for everybody. But I don't think we could put it on, on the urban culture, man. I think rock and rollers have been biting the heads off of pigeons and, Facts. and lighting shit on fire mm -hmm. and... Yeah. One of the great ways to, to, you know, celebrate a good set was to take your shit and destroy everything on stage. Break the guitars. I remember that. And, you know, some of the greatest rock icons overdosed on stage, died while they yes. were performing. Yes. Yeah. So I think to say that the urban culture just shined the light on it happening in the urban community. Because, you know, for lack of a better term, bro, there may have been 20 rappers in the 80s. And now in the 2020s, there may be it's 2 20, million it's, rappers. It's 20 right? rappers every five miles. Right. So... You know what I mean? Some of these guys are spokesmen for what they see and other of these guys are mimicking success. And then you have the one that is a, a, a leader. You know, the extensus youngs or the futures or the little babies or yeah. the trippy reds or yeah. these guys are, are right. city girls. Yeah. These guys are leaders of their own army, if you will, because they have a fan base. Mm. And whatever they talk about is what those people like. So, you know, don't both forget, the city don't girls forget are in relationships now, aren't they? Yep. One don't of them is pregnant, right? One of them is pregnant. And oh no, wait, no. I don't is she pregnant? Damn. I don't know. Did we say that on, on camera? But don't forget they have it's another rap too now. Scam rap. Yes. Don't Shout out that to uh, yes. your boy. What's his name? Um God damn <laughs> it. Detroit. You got gang rap, no, then you got scam what's rap. My guy's name, Somebody from man. Detroit, right? The kid who fucking gave out the scammers manual. What's this fucking kid's name, bro? Shout out to you, man, for putting it all out there. <laughs> How you fucking swipe checks. What's the kid's name? Not Propane's guy. Yeah, shout out to Propane. Yes, it is Propane's yeah. guy. Out What's Propane's guy? Um, I forget Detroit. his name, too. I forget his name. I know you're talking about, though. He did the Scammer's Bible. He did the Scammer's Bible. Scammer's Bible. Man. Did you that know shit, that? that? He was selling the Scammer's Bible. I did know that. He tells there's you exactly there's what to do. a documentary out about him on... It's an episode of, like... Giving the game away. 2020 or Police something. Police officers, I will not say, but I have somebody definitely that I know that is a professional now. Remember the Anarchist shit. Cookbook? Yes. The anarchist cookbooks yes. teach people how to make all kinds of nefarious. I'm not going to tell you what it is. From but the 70s, right? Yeah, it's yeah. definitely something that if you're in Ukraine and you could hear this, find get you a copy of the anarchist <laughs> cookbook and you'll be able to defend your country against Russia. Yeah, that scam shit? That's yeah. shit real. Scam shit is definitely real. Yeah. You heard about the lady that just got hit, the crocodile of Wall Street, $5.7 billion in Bitcoin. Mm. They're calling her the crocodile of Wall Street. They had wow. the wolf of Wall Street. She's the crocodile of Wall Street. $5.7 in Bitcoin, the largest- How did she get caught? Recovery, I guess when, from what I was, from what I'm understanding, you, you can follow Bitcoin. So you'll know where the money is going. And if you can follow the money where the money is going, then ultimately you'll know when it goes to cash out. And when you go to cash it out, That's they're going to come grab your ass. So wow. be mindful. You be careful. You know what I mean? Because I was a very popular rapper that just took an advance in Bitcoin. And then 15 days later, Bitcoin dropped 65%. So his million dollar advance was well worth less than 300,000. Mm -hmm. Not 14 days after he got the advance. Mm -hmm. And usually Bitcoin is not that volatile. Well, it happened at a bad time for him, buddy, because he got a million dollar advance. And then two weeks later, that shit was worth less than a third. You better sit on that. <laughs> better sit on that. You better sit better on come it. Back up. Especially when go the back album up. didn't have any hit records on it. Mm. Ouch. Eek. All right, so wait. Uh... Wendy says something, and we were uh, meeting for breakfast one time for a kingpin for our breakfast today. She said, there are people that run labels, and there are people that play music business. Mm. Could you please elaborate on I that? I can. So there's people that really treat this like a business, and then there's people that are just in it because they want to floss or they want to look like they're doing something. And it's throughout time, this has always existed. This is not a new phenomenon, right, where somebody will press up, print up, business cards that say, you know, homeboy records and start their company and say, okay, I want to sign you, 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 and you. And now I've got 10 artists signed 
and I don't know what I'm doing, but I got business cards, so I'm looking good, and I'm shooting videos, and I'm buying T-shirts and jackets that match, and maybe I got you a pendant so that we look real. My MySpace is jumping. I still, and my MySpace is jumping. <laughs> I still don't know what I'm doing, and yeah. that's what I'm talking about. We have more of that in this industry. It's like when, when I was a young kid, I used to play restaurant. I used to play house. I used to play Barbies. I feel like that as a grown up is what's happening in the music industry. Like people are here to play music business. Yeah. I just want to look like I'm doing something. I'm not really doing something. I want to look the part. It, yeah, it drives me crazy. You can look dress the, for the role that you are. It's really not hard to do this. I've yeah. Never you admit that, we're yeah. not curing cancer, right? Right. Correct. We're this not. isn't rocket science. Like if Correct. I can do this, any motherfucker can do Amen. this. Amen. I'm an ex-con. I shouldn't be doing this shit. Right? Yes. Anybody can do this. You just have to actually Learn how to do it and put in the work. But if you look the part, and I think a lot of people are looking the part, you can figure out a way to finesse money out of people, and that's what's happening. Ah, oh, it's for the finesse. Well, yeah, yeah, a, the finesse. A sucker and their money will are, will soon split. Yeah, they will soon part There's ways. a fool born every minute, right? There's a sucker born every minute. And it would be so much easier for me to just give somebody my money than to actually learn how to do it and do it myself. And then they can fudge, they can fudge the numbers. Right. On time for the cap report. Right. Um, they can give you, they can, they can influence it, <laughs> create a false sense of influx on a lot of things get you some followers, get you some wow. comments, and now everything looks good, but is it really good? No, it's not. You know, it requires it's not work. Organic. You know, I think, um, you know, like most NFL coaches, they get to the to the to the to the gym at four and five o'clock in the morning, three four hours before their players get there to get ready. Yeah, I think it takes that type of preparation yeah. every day. Every yeah. day, not some days. Every you do, day, you every do day. that. I have to Your do that. Prep is and you take it takes consistency Amazing. though. Well, because I, here's my, here's my thing. I'm not as I'm not 30 years in. I'm not as young and as vibrant. I'm not as affluent, or I'm not as able to multitask, or I'm not as talented. But what I am is I am consistent and I am diligent. And while everybody is getting the rest that they need so that they can wake up and be the best version of themselves, I have to show up a little bit earlier and stay a little bit later to make sure that I can deliver or match that same output from everybody around me. So understanding that in order for me to maintain my level of uh, consistency or my level of superiority, it requires me to do those extra things. So, it, you know, Keep sometimes it. you got to do it. It really works for you. Like I appreciate it. Thank you. Like you out-research everybody. You, you, you're who I call when I have questions. That's I amazing. That. I'm humble. Facts. Thank you. I love that. Facts. I love it. Yeah. We got to know the answers, man. People are coming yeah. to us. People are tuning into this show because they want the answers. And right. I think that's one of the beautiful things that we give it to them. It's just in a code. you got to decipher it. And I think that's what the cheat code is. It's if you're willing to take 30 minutes out to watch the show, then you should be willing to take out five jewels from each one. And, and apply implement them. That. Yeah. Apply, Knowledge is power yes. only when applied. Yes. Okay. I got one for both of you. Oh, I got all three of us. We all, all three of us get people in our DMs walking up to us and say, hey, Kingpin, hey, Wendy Day, hey, Rari, put me on. <sighs> yes. Three words. Yes. Right? Put me on. No one. No. No one can. No, put nothing. You on. Nothing further. Nothing no. more. They say. No. Put me on. No. Here, here's the doozy. Are you ready for it? Come on. What do you do? Yeah. Do you offer promotions, or the ever infamous? What are your rates? Yeah, that's it right there. So you know, at how the much end it costs to get on the radio? I, I'm doing it on my own. Is a euphemism for <laughs> I need a daddy. So whenever you fix your mouth to tell somebody you're doing it own, at least to me and everybody in my circle, you're telling us that you want to be rescued. I'm just doing this on my own. Nobody cares. Who gives Nobody a gives a rat's Nobody. ass. Who gives a I fuck, though? I don't see it as they want to get rescued. I see it as they want to be taken advantage of. Put me on means rape me. Fuck me up the ass. Do shit to me that I'll never know. With handcuffs on. Yes. Pineapple. Behind my that's what That's what <laughs> this all means to me. So if somebody's saying put me on, they're Pineapple. saying I don't want to do any work. I don't want to make any effort. I don't want to put up any of my own money. I don't want to build a fan base. You, you, you can't put somebody on. I get so mad when it happens to me. Sometimes if, if the right DM catches me on the right day, I'll send them a paragraph. And I'll say, just because I, I be, I'd be like, I know you don't understand how this works, but that ain't what you say to somebody no. like me. But no, here's, here's the that. thing. If, no. if, a, if a person like a Ferrari or a Wendy Day can put you on, it only matters if you could stay on. Facts. If not, then they fucked up. And if we're worth putting on, I'm going to find you. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to yes. come find me. 
No. I will have realized who you are. Right. What and you I, feel like you're spe- I feel like you're you. special. And I want to help you. Yes. Right. Yes. I, I like to help those that are helping themselves. Me. me it's as well. easier. Me as so well. if I if I happen to ride by and, and I see somebody time. doing something and it's like, hey, man, you're doing something productive. Come on, I got you. Let me help you. Let me help you get to where you got to go faster. That's my charity is your that your is what you pay for your space on earth. So pay it forward. Agreed. Everybody that's listening to this cheat code, pay it forward. Find Agreed. somebody to help today. If you want to be helped, the fastest way to be helped is to help somebody else. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that was great, though. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you addressed that. I, I have a paragraph in my phone in notes so that when I get that DM or email, I, have it I can just cut and paste it. I and cut and paste it. Because it really bothers me. It irks me. Because I know they're going to go to somebody that's going to really screw them over. How about this? They're and sending that to maybe of, 10 different people. Of course. Maybe 100. Put me on. Hey, put me yeah, on. Put me hey, on, put, put me on. on. Put, put me on. But where did that come from? Like, where did where did somebody learn that that's how the music business works? I think sometimes, and uh, I know you're going to say some. Uh, I think sometimes the overnight, which isn't true. It's never, nothing's overnight, in my opinion. I think sometimes Never. those overnight quick microwave songs that pop and go mm-hmm. crazy viral mm-hmm. gives people a false, like, yeah, I just, the person that found me just DM'd me, and I was like, oh, is this you? Cool. And the next thing I know, I'm on a flight to uh, L.A., and I signed a deal. That never happens That never for real. happens. That's so not stop real. Stop thinking that shit is real. It's fake. It's not real. Yeah. It's la-la. Or the ever infamous when the established celebrity whose account is managed by a company slides into your DM and says, hey, I love your record. I think you're doing great things. I've got a mixtape I'm putting out with 10 slots and for $50. Like, damn, bro, you got a blue check, bro. You really do get... Yeah, bro, I'm just looking out for the indies right now. I just... I'm paying the engineer with there's this. A, there's a guy in New York. I think this is what you're talking about. There's a guy in New York who runs, like, Jada Kiss's account. And, okay, I won't embarrass mm-hmm. anybody, but... And that's those exactly guys, that's exactly move. what they do, of course. That's exactly the yes. move. Yes. So, exactly artists, move. please pay attention. A lot of these guys don't even read their, their, their DMs. Who you think are reading their DMs? Usually it's their manager replying right. to you. If you're sending if they a reply. direct message and when on my profile, it has a contact option with my phone number, my email address, and a link to the website where you can ask for more specific information. Yeah. If your method of business reaching out to me to conduct business via DM, you get exactly what the fuck you, you, you're, you're, gonna, you're yeah. expecting. And if, and if somebody reaches out to you from Sony Rec Rods at gmail.com, it's Rec not Rods. real. Yeah. Facts. First of all, they're fucking called Sony Music. And they right. have real internal email addresses. Yeah. And it's actually spelled right. Yeah, and recrods at gmail.com. And I don't understand how some of you guys are getting your Instagram hacked. If you really want to turn that 1,000 to, to, to 20,000, it's not going to happen, bro. Stop clicking the link and stop sending your information to, to pay Listen, to Listen, they're, they're getting jazzy, though. They're, they're sending out Facebook links now. These guys are getting real, 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 I real, real. DM. Crafty at my these accounts. Amazon was frozen. I got an email, a, a text message yesterday that my Amazon was frozen. Click this link so that you can reset your password and get back in. Dun, 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 dun. My block list who is so long. Mine too. Yeah. Who falls for that? Like, who? Like, are there people really clicking on that? I block every forex trader, bit miner. Um, yeah, I block the political yeah. folks. Yeah, anything God, like that, I the, block the fuck out of them. Tunes, the cartoons, folks. and all that shit. Us, it you. used to be the hair people. The hair people. They they've calmed down. And then it was the cartoon people. They calmed down, and now it's like Bitcoin. So everybody's a forex trader and a Bitcoin miner, and they all got to get rich quick scheme. And then now they're giving away iPhones. So be careful of that scam. Yeah, and PlayStation Fives. And they have the iPhones. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, moving right along, I do have a scenario for both of you guys. Um, an artist is on. Finally, he has some success. He starts making real money. What is the first thing he needs to do or learn when he starts making real money? How to pay his taxes. Mm. Yeah. Definitely how to keep an accountant and a lawyer on retainer. Yeah. A trustable yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Trustworthy matters. Um, You know, until an artist is able to take, you shouldn't be taking any money out until you're matching every dollar with your earnings back into the system. So you can match what you want to take out. You shouldn't be taking anything out. So if you're seeing real money, you should be pumping it back into it to double and triple and quadruple and get you to where you need to be faster. So then you could take out your change and then put that double amount in, back into every song. Because once you start seeing money in this business, it won't stop. Yeah. The thing is to start seeing the money. It's like generating the water coming out of a well. At first, it's going to be a couple drops. And the more you pump, the more drops come out until finally it starts to come out and it starts to flow. 
Then when it starts to flow, having good money management, having a good financial advisor, having good sound investments, um, all of those things are going to help you. It's, not buying Prada shoes. Yeah. This sounds like it's not a lazy thing to do. It's work. It's a lot of work. It's work. Money is work. Let me ask you a question, Ferrari. Yep. You, you work at the radio station. Yes, sir. Let's just say somebody came upon you and said, Ferrari, here's a half a million dollars. Mm. I did what are the roles that you feel need to be had to run your record label? Man, I would have to have a... Just be first, realistic. The first two people I'm going to call are actually going to be you two. No, no, no. Oh, I may no, call, no, Sean. I may call Shauna first. Let's say you're going to have somebody... <laughs> you're going to have to have... That's real. You're, you're right. going to have to have a road manager to go on the road with your artist. Correct. So the chances are you're going to have to have a driver. That driver's going to have to be security guard. Yes. You're going to have to have a camera to go, a person, camera person to go on I'm the road I'm going to need interns too. You're going to need somebody to answer the phone, yeah. to handle your day-to-day operations. You're going to need somebody to oversee your social media. You're going to need somebody to create the content. I'm going to get multiple you're gonna offices at Wendy's. You're going to need somebody to oversee Wendy's, your publishing. You're going to need your lawyer. You're going to need your accountant. You're going to need your business advisor. So these are 10 roles that you haven't even factored in the person to take out the trash, the person to order the material, the person to do any of this stuff. So at these 10 roles here... How much money do you think it takes to pay these 10 roles to be able to do their work for you five days a week, That's 40 like hours a week? That's almost the whole budget right there. It's a lot of money, yeah. isn't it? That's about so three, if about you don't know what it is that you yeah. want to do or where you want to go, one year. half a million ain't shit, is it? It's nothing. No, no, it's not. So when you start thinking about what it is that you want to accomplish, then you have to figure out, reverse engineer it. I want to be at Madison Square Garden. What's it going to take to get Madison Square Garden? Yeah. Reverse engineer it. And that's going to give you a great idea that's how of what it's going to take. I've yeah. reverse engineered everything. Yeah. Everything. Amen. Every record I've put out, everything gets reverse engineered. Yep. That's why I said we take it with it enough, we'll this. figure out how it works. And once we can figure out how it works, then we can figure out how it'll work for us. Exactly. Yes. Because once we know how it works, we can do it. I feel like artists are, tend to not educate themselves on the business and they rely on experts to help them. But then sometimes they get mad at the end when the experts are taking their percent and they're not paying attention. Hey, well, we did this, 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 and this, this cost this, this, this Education and that. requires comprehension. Correct. Right. You have to be able to understand what it is that you're reading and doing. If you right. can't understand it, it doesn't matter. Right. You have to understand it because people only pay for what they value. And if they don't understand it, they won't value it. That's why you have to convince somebody to pay for a social media campaign when they're running ads because they're running ads on dormant accounts. One mm. doesn't work without the other. Mm. Mm. Okay. Dear the Cheat Code. And you can send me questions at Ferrari I love the Simmons Dear the Instagram. Cheat Code. I just signed a deal with Warner. I am choosing to remain anonymous. This is real. Because of obvious reasons. Now, after reading through my paperwork, I've noticed that my manager has had some things changed behind my back. Signed a deal with Warner. Is that legal? What should I do? The lawyer we used was his lawyer. I do not want to use this $25,000 advance money I received. I need y'all help. Can somebody rewrite a contract after the fact? After it's been written? No. Well, yes. If, if before it was signed, the manager was negotiating on behalf of the artist, mm. um... Is. So he's seen the contract after the notations were made, yes. after he signed it. It means, it means the artist, he or she, allowed their manager, manager to, negotiate to negotiate on their behalf. Okay. And then the manager said, okay, it's good now, here, sign it. And they signed it. And they signed it. Because you're my manager, why right. would I and have I trust behind you. you? Right. And I trust you. Right. Yeah. Right. And Lawyers. unfortunately, a signature is a signature, no matter if your attorney was playing both Damn, sides. Damn, I wish you had that shirt on. You're fucked. Yeah. You're fucked. And can I be honest with you? A $25,000 advance isn't it's a nothing. lot. That's no. nothing. But they probably didn't have leverage. Again, I may, not, may or may not know who this is. I mean, don't get me they wrong. I could, have... I could take $25,000 and fucking make it twerk. Right. But the yeah, average course. person that gets signed the $25,000, they're going to go buy a car or a house with it or something It just tells me Warner didn't it. believe right. in them. That's right. what that tells me. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend grand it. Because 25, 25 grand is a video. You can't even piss yeah, on that. for real. Yeah. And then you don't have the money to push the video. Remember we talked about that for people that went to South by Southwest. Like you spent 20 to get there and didn't have 20 to advertise it. You just recorded a movie nobody could see. Right. Yeah. That was pointless. Right. Yeah. But they had fun. Yeah. So to them, what do you say? Lawyer He's, up, bitch. He say he needs our help, guys. I, I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think this person needs our help. But the problem is, if if they just signed this, they don't even know if Warner's behind them or not yet. They don't know if it's going to work or not. The goal for me would be to become successful and then renegotiate my deal as soon as I had more leverage. Mm. Like I would put in the work, I would use that 25 to market and promote myself, and then I would. That would definitely be frustrating. Bigger. 
Warner is a big brother. Would... Remember the big deal on the Priceline Negotiator commercials? Yes. Whenever they, whenever they wanted a better deal, they would bring in the big deal. Yep. So Warner Brothers, Empire, whenever you have distribution, that's the big deal. So that's the difference between you contacting Apple when there's an issue and your distributor contacting Apple. And since Warner distributes so many records to Apple, they're going to get a faster response and a faster resolution to your issue. And they knew who to call. So, so, so to Wendy's, uh, to you know exactly what she said, yes. I, I would, if you signed on it, and you got distribution, and you got some money for it, well, now it's time to take Working. the cards that you were dealt and play you a hand to parlay it into another no one, a winning situation. It, it's not like this is good advice. It's like this is your only advice. Because your only other thing you can do is just sit down and do nothing. But you can't sit down and do nothing because this is your dream. And you can't put music out behind the back of Warner because you'll get sued and nobody's going to touch you. There's no win. There's no win to this. Sign me to, to Warner, and I'm going to the office every day, and I'm going to meet everybody that works there, and I'm going to learn everything that they do. That would learn be their names. And what their yeah. phone number is, learn and what names, they like, number, and who that. sits at the front desk, yes. and what she's allergic to, and what he's allergic to, and yeah. who sits really outside of the rain. Stupid. That's what I'm going to learn to because do with my 25000 the, the staff inside of the building, they work what they love and what they believe in, you know? Okay. So make sure you know the people inside the building so you can get the cheat code outside the building, yeah? Cheat code next episode coming up soon. Cheat code!